In today's headlines, a new update in the country's mass policy flip-flop saga. The government is accused of wasting taxpayer money, although that's hardly news, and hotels are in recovery mode as the country approaches endemic status. That's all coming up in today's program. Today's show is brought to you by Tiger Property. For all your real estate needs in Thailand, link in the description below. You're watching Thailand News Today, bringing you the latest top stories in Thailand and beyond. My name is Jet Gunther, and in our first news bomb for the day, the CCSA has acknowledged that face masks in Bangkok may soon be dropped. Although no date has been announced just yet, the CCSA says the easing of mask wearing in some public locations is on the table, as well as allowing night venues to stay open until 2 a.m. Nightlife venues are allowed to officially open until midnight starting June 1st, although in reality they've been open for quite some time now. Any further extensions to opening hours will be based on infection numbers, with the CCSA reviewing the COVID situation every couple of weeks. Today's report of official COVID infections was just around 2,200, a massive drop from the over 28,000 cases registered on April the 1st. The trend downwards has been steady and stable since the start of April. CCSA Chief Support Mala Niyom revealed that officials are meeting on Friday to debate whether to extend the opening hours of night venues and that there is a strong possibility that more restrictions will be removed. Meanwhile, Bangkok's newly elected governor, Shachat Siripan, yesterday said that he believes the time is right for people to stop wearing face masks in open areas. Our second news bomb is going right past the government scanners because allegedly its bomb detectors are as good as cat poop scoop. The Thai government was slammed by the opposition Move Forward Party for wasting almost 7.5 million baht to investigate GT200 bomb detectors that have already been deemed as defective. As for the analogy of being as useful as cat poop scoop, it was the Move Forward Party that thought of that punchline, not my own, unfortunately. The GT200 was produced by UK-based Global Technical, who claimed the device could detect from a distance various substances, including explosive and drugs. It was distributed to a number of different countries in 2001. The first organization that imported and used the GT200 device was the Royal Thai Air Force. The UK government banned the export of the devices in January of 2010 and warned foreign governments that the GT200 was wholly ineffective at detecting bombs and explosives. The owner of Global Technical, Gary Bolton, was convicted in 2013 on two charges of fraud relating to the sale and manufacture of the GT200 and sentenced to seven years in prison. The device was first used at Batong Airport in Yala. Officials were impressed by the quote-unquote result, so more devices were imported into other departments. But the device's efficacy was questioned after it failed to detect car bombs in Naratiwad in the south of Thailand. The device was tested and it was discovered that it could only detect four bombs out of 20. The result led to a further investigation and prosecution of the distributing companies and relevant Thai officials. From 2001 to 2010, Thailand imported almost 1,400 devices, costing 1.2 billion baht. Move Forward MP Dirat Tong Suwan pointed out during Thursday's budget debate that the government is now wasting another 7.5 million baht to investigate the bomb detectors, which back in 2010 have already been deemed as useless black plastic boxes. Girat says that the government hired officials from the National Science and Technology Department Agency to investigate 757 GT200 devices, costing 10,000 baht each. On Saturday, the NSTDA launched an official document to explain the issue, saying that the investigation of GT200 was processed and is ready to present the report to the court. 
but เจษดาเด่นดวงบริพันธ์ professor at the faculty of science of j u l a l o n g k o n university who led the GT 200 investigation team back in 2010 says the investigation had already ended back in 2010. So why is the government spending another seven and a half million baht to investigate a device that was already investigated? I'm sure the comment section will have fun with this one. So as the government is spending money investigating devices that were already investigated, government house security police revealed yesterday that they are still owed more than 1 million baht for special overtime services from last year. Some 150 police officers from the Supervision Division 4 of the Special Branch Bureau 3 who take care of government house security say they had informed their superiors in the relevant departments about their missing salary, but claim that no one will take responsibility. The unpaid work relates to extra shifts that officers did monitoring protests around government house from August to September of 2020. The unpaid allowance totals just over 1 million baht, and each officer was promised around 6,800 baht for the additional work hours. After the media leaked the story yesterday, Royal Thai Police spokesperson Ying Yot Teb Jam Nong explained that the allowance had already been proposed to the financial department and approved by the budget managing department. Ying Yot added the delay is because of some extra documents that were needed from the Special Branch Bureau 3 and says he expects the issue to be resolved within a week. Public Security Police Commander Surapong Tanonjit insists that the allowance and income of police officers is important and the issue needs to be solved as soon as possible. Surapong says he has assigned the financial and budget managing departments to take a closer look at the case and update him on the situation. With COVID projected to be labeled as endemic next month, hospitals and alternative quarantine sites have resumed normal operations. Hospitals are hotels that provided rooms for people who had mild COVID symptoms. They helped ease the strain on the kingdom's hospitals during the peak period of the coronavirus pandemic. But now the service is consigned to history. Hotels that used to rely on Chinese tourists as a source of revenue were the hardest hit. Staff shortages are another problem as the industry tries to get back on its feet, since many experienced employees have left the hotel industry. The conversion from hotel to hospital helped hotels sustain some income as tourism was hit hard. But now, restrictions are easing and the borders are opening, hotels can return to normal just in time for the high season later this year in October. An extensive maintenance and cleaning procedure is already underway in preparation. As many as 128 Thai businesses chose to partake in alternative quarantine services to welcome both visitors and regular guests, such as those attending meetings and seminars during the final few months of the AQ program. Last month, the Department of Health Service Support announced the closure of all AQ sites. However, if the number of cases rises again, the quarantine service will be reinstated. After some COVID requirements were relaxed on May the 1st, the number of people arriving at Suwanapum Airport that needed to stay at AQ accommodation dropped to around just 30 per day, compared to up to 700 per day in the second half of 2021. A Pattaya policeman was seriously injured after a former senior sergeant major went on a violent rampage. Jesada Pon Rungtarit was arrested and sent to a psychiatric hospital for treatment after a number of anti-social incidents at Na Jom Tian Housing Government Project in Chonburi Province. Residents alerted security guards to a scene after Jesada Pon began hammering on residents' doors and threatening them with a knife. This followed several nights of antisocial behavior where neighbors would be woken in the early hours of the morning to the sound of him shouting and throwing things around inside of his apartment. One policeman was injured during the arrest when the suspect hit him with a wrench. Jesada Pon was then sent to Banglamung Hospital after police apprehended the man on Saturday. His mother says her son had a history of self-harm after losing his temper. 
The 68-year-old says her son's mental illness problems are a result of long-term drug abuse. She explained to police that the former senior sergeant major began using drugs while on the job and was forced to resign due to physical and mental ailments caused by his substance abuse. And that's all for today's report. Thailand News Today will be back tomorrow. Meanwhile, you're not up to date on The Tiger.